Jim, we hear you talk about these different dimensions, third, fourth, fifth. I'm curious if you can explain what, what are they? I can. Let me see if I can do it in a short manner. <laughs> Jim's never done anything in a short manner. I don't know how to do that. So dimensions are I'm being simple like a box or a construct in a way. <clears throat> and they have structure to them, they have design to them, and they have function to them. So let's call it rules in a simple way. The third dimension is very interesting. So if we were to put it into a box, three dimensions, in simple dimensions you have length and width and height. But there are three characteristics about the third dimension that are unique. One of them is linear time. So when you play in the higher dimensions, you're in present time, you're in simultaneous time, you're in a circular time, I can talk about those in a minute, but in linear time, you, are, you have a construction that is past, present, future, and then you die. And one of the things, everything got condensed, compressed, the density got much greater. And so the time structure got squeezed and extended so that when you began to do something, you actually had room to change your mind. I think this is right, I'm going to try it, I'm going to ease into it. But that process moves through a timeline. In present time, in the higher dimensions of time, you simply say, I'd like an apple to appear, and the apple appears. But in third dimension, because of separation, which is what third dimension is really all about, you didn't have all your pieces together. The mental and emotional body were fragmented. The physical body didn't have the same re relationship. So you really aren't sure of yourself. Does that sound familiar to anybody? So the time piece was one of the primary considerations. The other piece that was there is the speed of light. Now we think, well, speed of light, that's as fast as it gets, right? Actually, no, it's about as slow as it gets. And so it's light compressed into a density. And so that structure, we don't grasp 186 miles, uh, 1,000 miles per second. You know, it's too much to grasp. But it is the construct of light vibration in a compressed density that allows you to have this level of density. That's changing significantly right now. So uh, I'll talk about that in a second too. The third piece of the puzzle is consciousness. So, and consciousness in the third dimension is very compressed. So you only know what you know and you don't know what you don't know. And when you start talking about higher dimensions and angelic realms and these kind of things, it's like, yeah, whatever. You don't have any grasp of it. You have a sense of it. You have something that has a memory attached to it, you think, but you can't even put that together. So the dim third dimension is this very compressed, limited, aspect of consciousness. Now, consciousness gets very interesting here. So as we begin to move into that fourth dimension, what you're starting to see <clears throat> is consciousness is loosening up, starting to be a little bit more available to you in different ways. One of the reasons that happens is fourth dimension is not a place. It's not a, it's not this kind of density. Third dimension is not this, it, not this uh, what you see. So in a way, third dimension is not the stage, the block, the body, the chairs, the room. That's all props and staging and backdrops for your play. Your play. Every one of you are the, the star of your play. So, but all the rest of it is form that we enjoy ourselves in and move around. So form in this context is not the third dimension. When you move into the fourth dimension, it's a state of consciousness. It doesn't have physicalness to it, but it has three characteristics that allow you to step out of this third dimensional space. It has present time, meaning right now. So like right now where you're all sitting, you're not thinking about lunch, you're not thinking about what you're going to do later on today, you're really right here, right now. Now present time even gets more precise, but basically present time. In present time, you have something in the fourth dimension that you don't have in the third dimension. You have choice. In the third dimension, you have reaction. Because of linear time in the third dimension, this place where this 
thing happened to me once upon a time, and I hope it doesn't ever happen to me again. And so you have your attention on worrying about that and defining that out here in front of you. Many times what happens is you bump into what you don't want to have happen in present time. It's like, oh no, this isn't supposed to happen. That's reactionary present time. You just throw energy around and try to fix it and deal with it. Reactionary present time. In the fourth dimension, which you play in simultaneously, you have choice. So if something didn't work or something broke, in fourth dimension you might say, hmm, that's not really good. Let's see how I pick up my pieces and move them around. Choice. Present time, choice. But the third piece is the vehicle, is the construct that really lets you step out of a lot of your emotional entrapments, your I'm not okays, your belief systems. In this third piece of the fourth dimension, it's called paradox. Interesting word. What it simply means is <clears throat> what was true just a moment ago may not be true right now. And what was false just a moment ago may not be false. So when I have somebody in my life who stole from me, lied to me, did bad things to me, I hate this person. And 20 years later, they show up on my doorstep. And I open the door in third dimension. I simply say, oh yeah, I know who you are. I'm going to kill you. Reaction, history, doesn't have any room for changing its absolutes. That's another one of the third dimensional pieces, absolutes. He was bad, he's always going to be bad. She stole from me, I'm never ever going to forgive her. Do you know anybody like that? How does that feel in the body, carrying around that never ever kind of feeling? For most that I watch, not very good. But what happens is with this word paradox, the ability to have that person knock on the door and say, oh, I know who you are, and be able to choose a different thought. And that person many times when that situation says, look, I don't know if you remember me, but 20 years ago I stole from you. And I've been carrying around this all this time. And I've always felt so bad about this because it wasn't meant to happen this way. And it's ruined my whole life. Now, from third dimension, I can say, hey, sucks for you. Or I could say, I remember you. Why don't you come in and have some tea with me? What do you do differently in that state of choice versus that state of reaction in that situation? That person walks away forgiven. You simply say, geez, you know, boy, that must have been tough. Let me give you another cup of tea. <laughs> Fourth dimension. So present time, choice, and paradox. Those two juxtapositions is what most everybody is playing in right now. And so sometimes we call that, I want to forgive. Forgiveness is an odd word. There's nothing to forgive. You've never done anything wrong, nor have they. But we make mistakes along the way. The pieces don't quite go together. Oops. Oops is one of those really, really wonderful words in life. Just think about it. Oops. There's no, it's not like, oh, that was really bad. No, oops. Oops. That's a really ugly dress you have on. Oops. What I meant to say is, you might look better in green. Oops, allows you to slide through the game a little bit. The, the, the piece that is the entryway into the fifth dimension is understanding something about the third dimension. Thoughts are electrical, emotions are magnetic. Now that sounds like, yeah, well, whatever, okay. You know, one of those things people say, it is so key to everything about you but it's not understandable in that format. So what happens is, if I said in third dimension, the mom, dad, teacher, minister have taught you how to live, it may not be how you want to live, but it's how they wanted you to live. And you're not okay, and you drew orange elephants, and what's wrong with you, and how come you can think these things? And you want to be a musician, but you're going to be a doctor. And all of that construct we carry around with. One of the things that is very valuable to begin to internalize and understand is most of the thoughts that you think and most of the beliefs that you walk around with are not even yours. Interesting? 
not even yours. Think about all that noise that goes through your head all day long and just kind of babble. It's not even yours. It's the energy around you. So that exercise about the rose is really valuable because it starts to take out some of that. But as you begin to play this game, that aspects of thoughts are emotional, I'm sorry, thoughts are electrical and emotions are magnetic, play a very big piece in this game because you're being altered. So in the third dimensional game, for example, that electromagnetic field, thoughts are electrical, emotions are magnetic. The electromagnetic field around the earth, that very beautiful domey donut shape that you watch every once in a while, and all those terrible solar bursts that are now hitting the earth. You mean, you mean that the speed of light is being altered? You're starting to have consciousness in a higher level of speed of light coming to you in the earth. Would that make any sense? So in order for this consciousness that's light, that we are decompressing as we move to the fifth dimension, am I okay so far? The light's beginning to decompress. There is massive solar cosmic x-rays that move from the center of the galaxy to the sun, get stepped down from the sun into the earth. But that magnetic field is now weakened in the last 30 years or so by 20% is the current estimate and weakening significantly. The north-south pole is moving at about 60 miles a year. It's moving a lot, year or is in that range. So what's happening is my box, which is structured this way, this way, and this way, is all of a sudden having ripples. The speed of light is changing. My box is being altered. The compression of consciousness is being loosened. My density in terms of paradox is beginning to not be as dominating and controlling and rigid. Am I making any sense? So your third dimension is being unraveled. I'll go one step further. In 2012, the door to the third dimension was closed. You no longer have access to the third dimension. But this is where it gets interesting because you believe you do. You have beliefs and habits and repetitive patterns and you think everything that was still is. Does that make any sense? When you can begin to have that concept that I spoke about earlier about your history is simply information to be applied or evaluated or let go right now, you begin to change things. So if my history is founded on I hate you because you stole from me and that rigidness stays in my third dimensional belief system, even though the third dimensional rug has been removed from underneath me, would it make any sense that you're beginning to have lots of choices? Would it also make sense that people around are having a level of instability? Everybody says, everybody, talk to almost anybody in their language, in their place where they are, and you say, do you think something's changing? Yes. They will all tell you. Do I know what to do with it? No, I don't know what to do with it. The average person on walking on the street is a little bit disruptive but doesn't know what to do with it. But you are the ones that are able to comprehend it, to allow yourself to play in expanded densities, expanded choices, the capacity to move around what was and make it something different. In that context, you begin to step into the fifth dimension. And the fifth dimension is a physical place coupled with a massive infusion of expanded consciousness. But if I was to make it simple, it's a place of well-being, of co-creation, of cooperation, of beauty and grace and dignity, respect, integrity. You begin to engage with people without fear, without limitations from a place of letting them do something that's a mistake and just go, oops, is that really what you meant to do? Oh, no, no, that's not what I had in mind. And they adjust it and we all move on. Fifth dimension. Fifth dimension does not function in words uh, in the same way that we play with words, language of words. It does at the uh, early stages of the fifth dimension. Don't have to find the other. 
But as you begin to get into the upper dimension, the upper aspect of it, whatever that means, keep that simple, you start to access something that some of you know, some of you speak, some of you hear, you begin to play in the languages of light. And when I say language is, there are many dialects of language of light within just the archangelic realms. And so they become conscious. To play in the fifth dimension in a way that is not just visiting, moving in and out, beginning to be happy, but beginning to be a experience that fifth dimension, what happens is you go through a complete reconfiguration. All humanity will do this, but you are the beginners, you are the leaders, the ones who are driving this. You don't know it where you're sitting in that chair, but that concept of light body, the crystallized molecular structure of the physical body with the capacity to fully hold the soul, the oversoul, the Christed oversoul, the merger in complete harmony, coherence with the mental emotional body, the etheric body, the causal body, and the Christed body. One body. In that configuration, in the fifth dimension, you begin to then access the sixth and the seventh and begin to play the game into all that is. That will happen to humanity within the next hundred years all of humanity in the next hundred years. But it's what will happen to you right now if you play, if you choose. Everybody won't choose. Everybody will choose different variations, but simply this evolution into that fifth dimensional space is about paradox. The ability to simply observe the situation, choose a different action or the action you wish to experience. It's in that consciousness that allows the third dimensional habits, beliefs, patterns, histories to just simply become a history of information to choose from to go into this next space. Third, fourth, fifth dimension, and what is the light body to the simplest level? <laughs>